Hey, we're here with Ladies Ma, talking all things Monarch, the new album. How are you? I'm great, thank you. How? I'm great, thank you. Um, I wanted to start actually by talking about, especially looking at the success of Kings Ma. I wanted to find out from you if this album is a continuation of that or if it's like a reflection of a new place you're going musically. Um, it's a bit of both. It is uh, a continuation in terms of telling my story and the way I process things and process love and hopefully people, um, you know, relate to that. But it's also a, a brand new chapter in terms of I'm exploring different types of sounds that I haven't um, in the past. I'm exploring different methods of performing on a track and I've, I've recorded a lot of performance songs as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mentioned the exploring different sounds. Does do you think this album fits into a particular genre, or are you sort of playing with different stuff? And if so, why? It fits into the dance genre yeah. overall. But what we've done is we've kind of broken it up into subgenres of dance. Mm -hmm. So there's the slower ones and there's the faster ones, but all of it is dance, 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 dance. And the reason why we wanted to expand on this genre is because there's so much to it. And people like to make the mistake of saying, I am a house artist. And that's just one subgenre of dance, you understand? So we've really just taken what dance is and we try to expand it for the people that follow my music and people who listen to the stuff that I do. Okay. And what are some of the ideas and sort of images that um, went into, that sort of inspired this album? Strength. Um, I feel like I've endured a lot. I fight battles every day, you know, yeah. and um, people don't get to see that because I'm not one to really talk about my stuff on socials and stuff. So the people that I know about it are the people that are close to the brand. Um, and I wanted to express how I view myself in context of the entire world, you know, in context of the, the male and the female. And what I've also done is um, <clears throat> strip myself down a bit as well in certain songs where I've been a bit more vulnerable so that people can understand that you don't, you're not one person all the time. You, you are literally always different people. How difficult is it to be sort of more vulnerable um, in general? In the language? At first I thought it was dangerous. At first I thought, yo, imagine now putting out my business like that. I mean, I've, I've learned to speak more in terms of expressing my emotions because I'm really good at expressing ideas but expressing emotions I've always struggled with so I'm um, you know I've, I've just kind of put it out there but as I've done that I've realized there's a lot of strength in that too yeah. you know vulnerability does not mean now you're a target you know vulnerability just allows people to not put a target on your back yeah. because now you've opened up yourself and you're like this is me what else can they say okay and does that, or is that part of, is there a lyrical theme going, running through the album? Yeah, there is. Or... It's passion um, in the context of love. And it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's threefold. It's passion, gentleness, and strength. Do you think you're stronger since King's Ball? Emotionally? Yes. I've, I've been through a lot. It's, I don't talk about it. That's what I'm saying. The music speaks for me. You know, I've, I've been through too much in many ways. Like the people who know what I've been through will tell you, like, yo, man, I don't know how you keep surviving all this stuff. And then <laughs> yeah. you start to deal with the business side of things and being a woman and always having people oppose you. Mm. you know, when a man says something, he, that's what he says. When a woman says it, you gotta allow it's always, always, it says it's, you know, it's very um, unnerving. Yeah. And how, what was the idea behind how the album was arranged? Uh, certain songs grouped together on purpose what inspired all of it what i decided to do with this album because it's, it's a very difficult album to listen to if you just listen to the songs as random songs i mean we move in different rhythms yeah and our rhythms are controlled by our emotions so imagine listening to different tempos haphazardly mm. it would it would put you off psychologically like you'd be like i don't have time for this you know because it's too much thinking work so what we decided to do is um, at first we thought let's group one particular genre that's familiar and then the other familiar genres together. And I figured, no, that is not going to be interesting for people. Mm -hmm. Why don't we take the major themes, figure them out, and then take the major sounds and distribute them. So that when you're listening to one slow tempo, the next song is not slow. Mm -hmm. 
I felt like it was a very fun exercise. It took about a month to really conceptualize the, the tracking. Yeah. Um, being 20 songs, it's also a lot. Like just the number yeah. 20 is just overwhelming in general. So we needed an album that flows, that yeah. was effortless, that people won't be sitting around and just skipping songs because if you group too many of the same songs together, you might have that problem, even though it makes a lot of sense in terms of genres. And what, are, what have been some of your both emotional and musical influences coming up? Emotionally, I think as a, as a writer, I'm just, I always like um, draw inspiration from how vulnerable actual writers want to write novels and playwrights and people who are, are poets, you know, how they process all this stuff and they allow it to happen. You know, people, human beings, essentially are afraid of emotion yeah. and being a writer and an artist you you, you kind of have to feel because you're speaking on behalf it's not like a painting painting is one way of, of sending a message but in a book you, you have to you have to connect on a word level with people you know they need to hear what you're saying without actually paying attention to it. <clears throat> what have you found are some of the sort of pros and cons of being an artist in the streaming era Streaming is such a, it's deceptive in a way. Sometimes people listen to your stuff because it's funny, not because it's good. You know? And sometimes people listen to good tracks in, in, in small quantities because that's a lot, mm. you know? And sometimes people listen for popularity. So streaming has its own devices. So artists have to be very careful in playing in those fields, you know? Um, <clears throat> person who's streaming is most likely doing everyday chores, not working. Because you can't be out here streaming while you're working. Yeah. You know? So you need to now find a balance in how do you get them interested when they're not being serious at work. You know, And those are the, the biggest challenges. And we can't think for people, so sometimes streaming is not the most successful avenue for certain people. The, the pros, however, is that people consume your music so much faster. Mm-hmm. So when a good song that really fits into the balance of everything, hits their ears, ah, they go with it. A lot of artists, I imagine, look up to you. What advice would you have for people trying to follow up in your footsteps, follow in your footsteps? They shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Don't follow in my footsteps. My journey is unique. Um, you cannot copy a person, a human being. I feel like it's a, it's a, it's a sign of disrespect to yourself. If you're going to copy, you can emulate certain things, you can admire to, to become a copy because they want to be like you. That's they, you can never be like me. Yeah. There's nobody like my today. So today, how many people have tried? Mm-hmm. And all they've done is just embarrass themselves. You know. So I think the one thing I'd tell anyone is find your find your voice, find your 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 unique voice that you have. And if you if you need to take things from certain artists in terms of discipline wise maybe uh, methods that they used you know that's okay don't try to be somebody else are there any collaborations you're looking at doing or is there one that you would really love to do right now all i'm looking is to collaborate with africans um being an african we we don't work enough together in terms of countries so i'd love to work with everybody who's african all the ghanaians all the cameroonians all the kenyans all the nigerians People from Botswana, Tanzania, everywhere. As long as you're African, I think that's what I want to do right now. For the next couple of years, I really just want to focus on elevating um, our countries, our continent in terms of music and kind of like, you know, pollination, cross-pollination of the sound. And lastly, what what plans do you have for 2019? I plan to release an album. (laughs) Um, Really dope visuals um, and a concert. So last year we had like a um, Golden Child concert. It didn't really go to too many places, but it did go to some. So we decided to do this year is concentrate on one big show after the album drops, where two and a half hours of me and uh, my band and dancers just giving people an emotional um, tour.